Hello everybody, welcome to another Zabbix video. This time I will talk about front-end module which is able to help to run different database queries uh, but this will be done right in the front-end. Uh, one big benefit of this module is uh, functionality as uh, exporting to the CSV that is like there will be a nice button. There is a nice button, uh, which practically means if you have some sort of of an experience with MySQL or PostgreSQL, we can work with the Zabbix database and extract uh, out all the necessary information. Sometimes different front end sections have some limitations. The CSV button is missing uh, for the sake of reporting, but uh, this module is a nice um, way like moving forward to give users the tools so they can still manage the get the job done. Let's um, have a look. Uh, initially this uh, module was uh, like um, it was released like quite a lot some time ago in year 2020, uh, 2022 but um, I just um, did some maintenance work today to make sure it's compatible with Zabbix 7.0 LTS and uh, in the same time I decided to gather like the best collection how this mo module can be useful uh, in a real life situation. Uh, big thanks to the Gregory, uh, the author, the developer of this module of uh, putting the work in to give the world this great utility. Uh, also, I want to highlight like uh, the complexity of module. It's not anything like rocket science. What it does, it's practically replicating an SQL cli client just right into the Zabbix front end. Uh, so it, it's, it, should it should not be uh, super hard to maintain if it breaks, uh, like it's just a, a SQL client in the front end, uh, maybe uh, we are migrating to PHP 9. That's something, and uh, some new functions come in place. And then, just by studying the the module, uh, we can still fix it because it's just an SQL client. Uh, also, what this module is not, uh, it's like it it will be accessible only for super administrator. Uh, it's not accessible for a limited user. If you are super admin, then you have full control to the database. Uh, also, even including sensitive operations like insert, update, and delete, uh, we can run such things also uh, as a part of reporting. Uh, okay, let's have a practice to install this module on a 7.0 LTS. I have appliance over here, uh, 7.0, and uh, I will like sh follow this official tutorial uh, from the blog post. And there is like com uh, chapter install, and I will just execute these commands: cd share Zabbix modules, the next one making directory, and uh, next one navigating to the di directory. Uh, then, like, uh, if you are uh, new to the Linux, you need to take care of uh, install widget and unzip, like these commands. Uh, so these must be there, and after that we can kind of download the package. Okay, it is here. And unpacking the package, and uh, now we have, like, uh, two different versions like don't follow all the way uh, all uh, steps in order like this line should be executed only in the 7.0 and uh, for the 5.0 and 6.0 you need to fetch this package so i will skip this line because i am using 7.0 uh, unpacking the arch archive and then removing the actual zip file that's it uh, all done here on the um, like actual on the linux server on the front end uh, this article it is designed to follow with the five uh, Zabbix 5.0 and 6.0 LTS. So if you write if you are right now on the 7.0, I would almost suggest like don't continue to read because all those examples in the uh, on this article it's designed for uh, 6.0 and 5.0 5.0 version. Uh, this video will be kind of dedicated to give a uh, new perspective uh, what what's useful on the 7.0. Okay, let's 
close this guy and minimize the SSH. And uh, so the module is installed in the Linux server. The next step is administration general. There is a section modules. Uh, click scan directory, search for here SQL, apply. And uh, out from the box, it's disabled version 1.12, enable and voila. Now what it does, it creates a completely new section over the administration SQL uh, exporter. And obviously like the section administration, that is accessible only through the user type Zabbix Super Admin. So don't uh, like hope this will be something which is available for simple user, only like super admin, which is having already sensitive rights, uh, only th those will be able to use the module. Uh, before we start to use like here, go to the configuration uh, and I would really suggest like checkboxing all things. These are like super useful checkboxes, uh, uh, just read them. Uh, and uh, now like, so what it can do, and I'm preparing here a collection. Uh, the links will be in the video description. And first use case is uh, like using front end to detect what kind of like um, values are spamming the uh, database. Like if you suddenly collect a lot of textual information, then like it would be nice to understand which uh, like the biggest or, or most frequent uh, text values are consuming the space. And these queries will kind of like, mm, it will help automatically to decide like sometimes we uh, uh, fetch like a very big text string, but not so frequently. Or if we fetch small text strings and very frequently, it will figure out automatically, like at the end of the end, at the end of the day, like which query consumes the most database space. So what we can do here, like select the query, copy, and put. Uh, and this one is uh, fetching the table uh, history text. Uh, copy, click, and you we put the query over here. Now we can put like the name immediately. Uh, biggest data per history text and click the button new click. And now it's like executing immediately, uh, like it's fetching the, the summary. And so it, it here, like it is the first column is showing the size. And if I would use more input, like uh, replace 999 with like another digit, uh, this size will get bigger preview. Uh, actually, I'm wrong because uh, there is not enough uh, data inside the database. But anyway, uh, clicking on the show latest click, uh, it shows immediately, okay, this looks like some sort of uh, like a, a garbage value. And uh, I know in this official template, from my personal point of view, this uh, item is not supposed to store the raw data. Uh, uh, so I would, the fix is here, um, I will go back here, uh, go click on item. Uh, here there is an item, click on item name. Uh, item, uh, mounted file system, the template. And it is from my point of view, this should never store the data like this is the fix. It was a, it was a mistake. And that's like the way sometimes when we see like a lot of data, uh, raw data is saved in the database, uh, we should uh, not have that. So update and I, I just now fixed that uh, problem. And yeah, clicking on other things like we can uh, like fix the problem uh, one by one. So this is first case. Uh, next one is um, uh, like, uh, next one is the log table. If you are uh, into log file monitoring, uh, then uh, it is doing a very similar task, but it is uh, fetching the history log table. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm very proud of this uh, query. Like uh, what it does is like it is uh, doing the select twice. Uh, like this is uh, kind of like uh, I, I'm proud of the portion that it's not using the where condition where uh, clock is bigger than something, which is really slowing down the thing in production. If you have like a big database and you are using the where clause, it will really like consume like five seconds or 10 seconds to complete maybe one minute. But if we use this subquery in the middle, like uh, fetching blindly the, the icing of the cake, I would say, like it's it's fetching the most accessible rows. And because of this subquery, it's um, 
it's very very fast even if you put here a million rows it will happen like very very fast and uh, the key thing is not to use the the clock as a condition and yeah it's like snappy fast always um okay next use case is um here uh, show which agents are not available right now uh, here selecting the query copy and going uh, back here uh, se se putting the query here um, zabbix agents uh, pass uh, passive checks not working something like that uh, click new and uh, here you go like the linux host and actually what is the error message and uh, here we can we see the error message and we can click right on this link click and start to like fix the issue if, or or disable the host or delete the host uh, so th that's the mechanism to go um okay and uh, i would also highlight like um from my point of view this is not the best way to to maintain uh, this is maybe the best way if you are manager and you need to delegate the task to the team uh, and and you have like hundreds of hosts offline then yes like uh, run this query export to csv send email and and job done uh, but um, actually to work with the agent on unavailable hosts or even snmp devices i made a video about the dashboard like uh, we can make a dashboard which is uh, uh, like having widgets per every category, like uh, active agents having trouble, passive agents having trouble, SNMP equipment having trouble, like ping device is not pingable anymore. And this is all native. And I would say like, what's better than solving problem with uh, as less de dependencies as possible. Uh, uh, and yeah, this is the great solution. No third party dependencies and I will put like uh, a link in the video description where you can learn how to build this dashboard uh, otherwise like yeah uh, you can use this query like to uh, show uh, which hosts are statistically right now like uh, not available and then uh, work towards solving solving the problem uh, okay going forward uh, same query for SNMP equipment uh, I will not re reproduce but it's the same idea or uh, uh, ah, one, one use case to highlight like why this is useful is because like sometimes we have uh, here like we have so many red icons and uh, if you have hundreds of hosts we cannot sort by availability here on clicking on the uh, column and it takes like forever to manually note down which host is uh, not available and then like then this query is uh, coming in or, or the, uh, the query is coming in or the dashboard like study to how to create this dashboard and uh, then we can like improve and solve all those red icons okay uh, last example i want to show is like um uh, more like a, 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 a surface level reporting let's say you have a uh, bigger decisions like uh, how you want to run the monitoring how you want to do the grouping uh, group by uh, like department number boot group by device type group by floor number and for that type of situation uh, we may need this query which is uh, it, it will print all the um, host list let's click the button click new uh, it will click uh, it, it will show like where the host belongs to which proxy like it will show the proxy name it will show if the uh, host object is disabled or enabled what kind of templates currently is linked uh, so here you can like uh, maybe you can recognize by the host name you look on the host name and you understand okay this is an exchange server but right now there is no dedicated template which uh, covers the exchange server deeply like the template is not there and we can brainstorm what to do next uh, like we need a separate template for that particular box and uh, another column for the grouping this is uh, uh, useful when you think about email notification uh, when we decide which team to inform uh, of course we can use those flexible tags i personally like to stick with the old school <laughs> what's what, what was working like 10 years ago it's still working today and that is using the host group for the notification 
And the last uh, thing is like uh, highlighting the IP address. Uh, my face is all over the place, uh, but yeah, um, the all the IP addresses, and I'm proud of this mechanism. Like even if you prefer to connect to the DNS, not IP address, then uh, this magical like position in in the query it will figure out like are you preferring direct connection to the IP address or you always use the DNS uh, and if the host is having even multiple IP addresses then all IP addresses will be there inside the list. Okay, uh, that is everything for this video. Uh, if you find it helpful, useful, uh, give it a thumbs up. Uh, all relevant links are inside the video description. And thanks for watching.